Hello and welcome to 1 in 20 D&D, where we think 1s are just as fun as 20s. This is a 5e game we're playing tonight. We're in the Kingdom of Agic, which is a... We're playing a homebrewed version of the Princes of the Apocalypse. And this is going to be our session 42. We had a little bit of technical difficulties at the beginning with the recording, so we missed just a tiny bit. Here's the most important thing that happened in the beginning of the video that was lost. Gitgrot, our dwarven paladin, returned to the group having secured passage for the prisoners that the group had freed previously, making sure that they could make their way safely back to the castle Agic or wherever they were headed. He then thought, uh, I, I can't leave my friends down in this horrible place and returned to the group to see that he could provide some added safety and protection so he came down the stairs and saw f just after i should say farron and boslon had defeated the specters from our last session so he comes clamoring down the stairs clank 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 sees farron farron sees him they they have a quick introduction with boslon Meanwhile, Kyra and Kaelin had gone into the tomb room of the dwarven hero. They saw that they they were able to actually gain some a, a nice little boon in the way of an aid uh, aid spell being cast on them because they paid reverence to this fallen warrior. And then they were doing some. Uh, a little bit of searching in the area, like checking some, some other corridors. So let's pick right up there with Kyra and Kaylin searching and see what happens. Okay, so we're essentially looking at stuff that I don't want to walk <coughs> into. Right. Well, so, so what you see is, what I was trying to explain is, the rooms you are in are about 10 foot tall, carved stone like the dwarven mine above what you see in front of you is a natural cavern the cavern seems to go up about 15 feet ish uh and it's sort of at a you know rough angle and sort of peaks together um there seem to be some kind of naturally carved steps that uh go down into this chamber and <clears throat> Uh, inside the chamber, you can see what uh, what seem to be. So, uh, I'll just describe it anyway, since you can see into it. Uh, a forest of weird fungal growth infests this large cavern. Giant toadstools and puffballs stand in and among shallow pools of water or atop ledges along the walls. Those walls are covered by huge growths of shelf fungi. And water drips constantly from above. So it looks like it's a really moist, densely um, forested fungal. Greg, is this your birthday? <laughs> it is. Oh, Happy birthday, yeah. man. That's what I was going. I was like, what? Yeah. I, if I'm doing the math right, I'm 44 now, I guess. So. Dude, I hope <laughs> I look as good as you do at 44. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, there's plenty of gray hairs, but, you know, that's not too bad. Small price to pay. Dude, young, fit, and gorgeous. We can all just hope. Right? <laughs> right. Indeed. So thank you for the birthday wishes. Great. All right, so everybody got that description? Yeah. So that's what Kyra sees right now. Uh, Kaylin, you actually see – you catch a little bit of a glimpse of that just outside your torchlight. Um, but you don't you don't see the depth like how far it goes like Kyra can see that it, it goes a pretty pretty good ways in here uh, what is that like uh, over a hundred feet in yeah um, you see maybe you know you're 30 40 feet in uh, you catch just a few of the toadstools maybe and you're kind of like maybe not sure quite sure what it is but Kyra could probably describe it for you. Um, and she seems to have not wanted to go in there. <laughs> I said, uh, icky. Yeah, let's not go here. So either we go back to where they are or we keep going. It's up to you. I'll follow you. Well, we've already come this far. Then I go walk right, and so open the next door. 
<laughs> oh boy. <laughs> This we're we're hoping we like so, move so around asked, and like connect asked, somewhere. What, I can I can I see the outline of some toadstools, Kyra, but I can't see much farther. I mean, yeah, don't don't go there. Let's just just not go there. Why? I, I, I'm thinking what, what, like. What do you? What, what? Why do you? Why do you say that? Let, it's quite intriguing to me, and it's fungus and <laughs> icky, and and um, I take off my mask and I put my mask in my um since we're like below ground now i put my mask in my bag i'm like uh, i'm like trying not to retch behind this mask so let's not go let's not go that direction let's just keep going straight kaylin has a short gasp as he witnesses the beauty of kyle oh my gosh <laughs> from, from the, in the in the, all right the shimmering light of sword carries him silly. And to himself how lovely how beautiful how interesting Sorry. <laughs> and, just, and what are Farron and Gitgrot doing at the moment? So you guys kind of grouped yourselves together. Uh, you're not sure where your companions are yet. I'm like lent up, like, like leaning up against the wall, going. So is this the Kalen and Kyra show again? <laughs> uh, wah wah! Fair enough, but true. <laughs> you're so walking around the corner right now. <laughs> All right, in the interest of actually getting back with the team so we're not splitting up gameplay, let, let, let's... All right, I'm coming with you, Kyra. Let's do it. Let's oh. go through this door and let's... Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we can meet well, around the other side. So... Or should right, we go but back? It took you guys should we go back or what? Do that. That's up to you. Let's go back. Let's okay. go back to the group. All right. All right. So what were Farron and Gitgrot doing during that moment when they were talking? Uh, just introducing... And Peeking through that room, yeah, but that only took you a moment or two. What would you guys have done? These are these are good questions. These are questions I have zero answers for. Um, I I, I assumed that everything was done, so I, I was just hanging out, looking around, waiting. Okay. <laughs> Probably okay. would have just explained like what happened when we went in that room. Bosslon might have suggested to check on the others. If if that was the case, I would have agreed. And I would have, I would have asked, of course, where they were. All right. So you guys probably, you probably bump into each other more like over here, sort where? in the, the south. Uh, like, uh, shit, let me just drag. Yeah, yeah, somewhere over there. Drag uh, over there, like here somewhere. I Y'all see a probably picture would've... of, of Gitgrot slow motion running and in, jumping into Colin's arms. <laughs> oh, don't ruin it yet, man. Because I, 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 I want to do a little speech. <laughs> All right, so Kyra, so Kyra and and Kaylin, you come out of that, back out of that room into the chamber where the giant staircase is, and you see, uh, along with Farron and uh, and Baslan, y- your companion Gitgrod has returned. Well, look at this. The stunty has returned. Kalen goes over and gives Gitgrod a big smack on the shoulder and a hug. How you doing, my friend? What brings I, you back? Why are you here? I, I couldn't I couldn't leave my friends down here alone. I, I, I couldn't do it. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen to you guys, so I had to come back. I let I let the guys go off on a caravan and I came back to make sure everybody was okay. Well we need the help, that's for sure. For some reason, all I want to do is just start smashing stuff. And as a dwarf in mine kind of here, you can appreciate that. I, but you, I are, can. you are a welcome return, my friend. It is always good to see you. It's good to see you guys, too. I'm glad everyone's okay. Well, I mean, I'm here. I mean, can you really think otherwise, pal? Come on, dude. Uh, you're right. Have a drink. And Kalen passes in one of the brandies that he, said, that he had from upstairs. <laughs> Get grub. Pops it open, and just starts drinking. <laughs> it's pretty terrible stuff. It is. It, it's literally fucking fire water. But Kalen starts drinking it with Gick Rock because they're old drinking buddies. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I mean it'll it'll do the trick. It just doesn't taste very good. <laughs> it has this kind of like sour note that like you're like, oh, that doesn't. Brandy should never be sour. What the <laughs> hell is that? And uh, yeah, it's just they had no. They were trying to ferment uh, to make maybe to make some money or something, give them something to do, probably. But they're not very good at it. <laughs> so, 
So. All right, so you guys reconnect. Uh, did you... <clears throat> Again, I didn't want to gloss over it, and just because you've been out of it for a little bit, get Grot, your, your two weapons, your two primary weapons are a little bit worse for the wear. Uh, I believe you still have a battle axe. That's in uh, condition. Let me see. I don't. But you definitely would know that your warhammer is and and your mace are out of not out of, out of works for a while. Well, I mean, in game terms, there's your they each have a minus one. Gotcha. So it's you know it's up to you. You can still use them for you know for fun and flavor, um, or you could either. Pull one of the <laughs> items out of the group loot, or grab yourself. Uh, yeah, so your splint armor too took a little bit of a beating. Yeah, I noticed the shield and the splint armor took a took a shot too. Yeah, so the splint armor and shield are the shield's going to be the easiest probably as far as armor goes. The splint armor you're going to have to find a suit of dwarven armor, which might be a challenge. Yeah, that's okay though. Um, right. I have a javelin. That's it. Because my mace, my warhammer, are both minus ones. So that's. I'm I'm working with the javelin, and I I ask if they've got any any extra. We have a great axe, Fan. don't we? Mm hmm. I think you have a great axe, as well as I think uh, Farron was saying that there's two of the Morning Stars. If you prefer the bludgeoning weapon. Yeah, I'd prefer something I can use a shield with too. So, uh, and ah. if I'm if I'm remembering right, I think a Morning Star can be used one-handed. I'm pretty positive. Let me double check. Actually, it doesn't matter because my shield is minus one AC and plus one AC, so it's just zero. <laughs> <laughs> See, why doesn't I even yeah. use the shield at all? <laughs> exactly. So I'll just take the great axe and go ham. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just take the great axe and. <laughs> well, a shield, back. technically, a shield is plus two. Okay, so it still so has you're, one you're left. still getting a plus one. Oh, yeah. No, so that's you could it. use the. So you might want to take the great axe if you want to do a little extra damage and keep the morning star so you can still get the little extra protection. And yeah. get Grot. I I actually now that I you know have this undesign you know I have this unnatural urge to want to destroy everything. I uh, I'd be happy to let you use the sword that your family forged for me, and my family. Oh, I'm not much of a sword person. Thank you, though. You know, th that's, uh, that's that's right. What is that about, Kalen? You're just. Going psychotic and crashing. I, 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 I don't know. For some reason, it comes and goes, but I just I feel the ever growing need to want to do a little crunch time. Understandable. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs to destroy something once in a while. Hey, can I see that weapon that you're holding, Kalen? I just want to look at it. So above the table, I'm fine with doing that, but doesn't does that do anything to me? Uh, you could no. I mean, you can hand it to someone without losing attunement to it. You're still attuned to it. Someone okay. else would have to attune to the weapon for you to. Well, no, to no, no, no. That. Kind of seeing like because uh, sometimes like cursed. I don't know if it's cursed or not, but cursed weapons sometimes they don't want you to hand them off. You have the. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Oh, great yeah. idea. All right, so Kyra holds out her hand to you yeah. and says, okay. um, "Can I expect that for a moment?" And absolutely. How do you want to no, no, I, Kalen says absolutely. I, I, I'm happy to have you take a look. And he hands uh, Kyra Iron Fang. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there is there any kind of history? Just looking at it. Are you asking? Good me? question. I'm asking the DM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it does have runes carved into it. Uh, they are. Let me just pull it up so I make sure I don't make a mistake here. Uh, Iron Fang. Because um, Kyra's trying to think, trying to figure out, like, so, is this the thing that's making him all? Because he seems different since he's gotten this weapon. Yeah. So, <sighs> you you definitely think it's a function of the weapon. Um, I mean, let me give me an. Uh, let me see. Uh, give me an insight check. Okay. That probably makes the most sense, I think, in this case. Or I guess Arcana would be fine, too. But... Well, which one? Because there's a drastic difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, for me. I mean, whatever, whatever you prefer. <laughs> yeah, whatever you Okay. Feel. Like, are you trusting oh, your gut? Or are you trying to use your... Nailed it. Oh, bam. So, um, 
So you, you. Nice, Michelle. It's almost av- as if, I mean, it's a war pick, right? And the back end. So it's got. If you imagine, I've shown a picture of it. In fact, let me let me just for the benefit of everyone right now, I'll do this so that y'all can sort of get a. Oh shit! I don't have it on there. You're <laughs> sort of getting an. I ocean. did. I got here, it. I, oh, can, shit. I, I can I can drop the link, Greg. Drop it. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. No, no, no I got it. I, I was looking in the wrong place. So here we go. Show it to all players. Can everyone see that? No. Nope. I see it. Show to players. All right. Let me see. All right. So let me put it in. Oh, because it's only. I see. Uh, so all players. Save changes. Show to players. There we go. There you go. All right. So that you can see from that image, right? It, it's it's pretty intense looking. Totally. Um, it's got this sharp crow's beak of a point on one end that's the pick side of it but but a war pick is also functionally a hammer as well so it has the back end of it has this hammer and and you just it's it's a freaking hammer and hammers are meant to smash things so you kind of have this you know, you're sort of putting two and two together. Looks at it like, his eyes twinkle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I hand exactly. it back and I say, I say, Kalen, I think this is the thing that's making you want to do all that stuff. But if you're okay with it, then um, yeah, go ahead. Well, I. <laughs> well, I all I can say is, you know, if it gets out of control, Kyra. And he puts his hand on her shoulder and looks into her eyes. I'm relying on you to make sure. Ooh, I can like zap you or something. Flame that it doesn't you up. get out of control. I can, I can like do some magic-y stuff and. I can always just knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I just point out. Like, okay. But he, t- but All he right. takes it back. But he takes it back and says, "But it's, it's too useful to help protect and serve those that." need our help the most all right well hey you know as long as you uh have it under control of course i have it under control and he says as he takes he snatches it away and he smashes it into the ground <laughs> and he just says i'm sorry i don't know where that came from i'm okay Kyra just kind of okay. gives him a sideways look he says yeah yeah you kyra's not sure Kyra's not sure if at which point it's actually the effect of the weapon and at which point Kalen is just messing with you. <laughs> but because but because Kalen's slightly embarrassed by his recent actions, he turns to the rest of the party and says, you know, you know, kind of kind of hurriedly, right, to kind of, you know, move on between that just rash, very obvious action. You know, we need guys, we need to figure out what what what, what are we doing here? I mean, we have been in we have been in this in this in this cave for the length days. Yeah, for for the length of of uh of uh, Sean Ducal's, you know, tome. Oh, Sean Ducal's actually not even in the game anymore. They took him out, or you know, Torm's, you know, uh, scroll. Um, we've killed, we've killed uh, Marlos. What the heck? Are, 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 what are we doing here? What is our, well, what is our goal? Our new, our new uh, goal is to go out down and <laughs> go to the place that I don't really want to go to because, but I gotta oh, find right. out some details. So right. that's right. kind of where we are at the moment. And then plus, we haven't been down here. Maybe we'll find some a stash or two as we're walking around. Got it. So we can uh, like just open doors and keep walking. If we run into anything, uh, just loot. chop it down and awesome. keep going. Loot. Speaking of which, so, uh, why did we kill the, that above lady the, upstairs? Above the, uh, above the table. Hold on. Before we go there, above the table real quick. I'm sorry, guys. Does Gikrot know about all the stuff that, that Kyra told us last time? About um, her father and all that. And why it was we're in a sealed there. letter. So, but you, but, you so shared, but you shared that with the party, so Gikrot wouldn't know that because he just came. He came does down. not. Yeah. What? So Gikrot was led to Kyra. They, her okay. Kyra's mother gave Gikrot a task, which was to bring to deliver. He he had just recently become an adventurer. And sort of was so, sort of a mercenary, kind of a sword for hire kind of deal. And Kyra's mother contacted him and ha- and tasked him with finding Kyra and delivering a letter to her. So he, he, that was sort of his connection to Kyra. 
Um, and then Kyra Farron decided that they would, uh, you know, Kicker Out would join them and they would start adventuring as well as Kaylin. Uh, you all met back in Agic, so. Yep. So you kind of grouped up and decided, hey, let's go out. And, you know, we're all yeah, able-bodied adventurers. He doesn't let's... know the whole thing because I would be kind nope. of weird if he gave me an open letter, like yeah, from totally. my, yep. you know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, really? You, was it addressed mm -hmm. to you? Yeah, no. So yeah, I he doesn't. Hard... <laughs> so probably he not. doesn't know much of Kyra's background. In fact, I don't think he's probably never seen you with your mask off. No, this is probably he the hasn't. first time he's yeah, seen I, you with your mask um, off. Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't know that Gikarat was here. I, I thought I might so have heard him, so I, yeah. I wasn't sure. So Great I question. took off my mask because I literally showed the other people that as I walked down. So I didn't think about him. So how does Gitgrot fa feel about encountering a drow? I'm confused. <laughs> uh, I mean... <clears throat> Conflicting I guess, like, reasonable. in his head, he's, he's like... Obviously, she's good, smash, smash. but she's uh, <laughs> not something that's usually good. So, like, in his head, he's, like, very confused. Awesome. And in the same moment, you get this sense, like, you notice that both uh, both Kyra and Kaylin, they have sort of a... You almost would call it an aura or, or something that you sort of recognize. Like, they're you know they're under the benefit of aid right now. And it's it's apparent to you. Gotcha. Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't Farin, need to get grot. We got our own aid. Ooh. Farron, you also <laughs> noticed something interesting. Uh, Farron, you noticed that Kyra is wearing the uh, the headband of intellect that you had found and were attempting to retrieve ooh, ooh, I am. way back when. Uh, I assume. I mean, based on our discussion, I figured you kind of like pulled it out of the bag and went like, then where the hell did this come from? Then that's what happened. Then that's what happened. As long as I'm stronger. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. Um, Either some sticky figures grabbed it or something. Yeah, because Torm had that. Somehow. Like, Torm, you're taking everything, Torm! Bring it back. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. it, so we're kind of like I. I take the time to, you know, just to fast forward, tell Get Grot what's going on. Yes. And um, okay. we're kind of all up to speed now. Perfect. Okay. So now, awesome. we're, so basically, we're looking for a, an entrance to the Underdark here in these caverns because, let's be honest, that would make the most sense given that we're in like an ever expanding cavern of like infinity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say we've been in here for. What do you mean, we motherfucker? You got to say something. Caleb's like, God damn! I'm like Casper the Ghost over here. I left so... forever ago, and I'm s and you're still here. Is what I meant to say. <laughs> well, no, it's only been like four days. So, like, let's look at the time for timeline for just a sec. So, it took you two days to basically clear the monastery remember you spent the night with the lich who basically kind of gave you a little bit of a boon gave nice Gikrot the the amulet you yep. got some uh potions and stuff so that was your first night quote unquote the second day you were able to essentially clear that level and chase uh what's her name uh oh crud i forget the 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 head monk's name right oh, now oh my god that was ages Down ago yeah right. Uh, you were able to chase her downstairs, yep. and uh, so she she sort of led you down into the temple inadvertently, and then that's that. that oh, what's her name? Here it is, right here. Um, uh, Helen Ray. So Helen. So you defeated Helen. No, sorry, you chased Helen Ray downstairs into the temple. Then in the temple, you spent one evening in the st the corridor the stairs that led down into the temple yep and then get grow fell when we got attacked third out. day you guys found yes. marlos encountered him chased him away off, yeah exactly found the um found the uh the gully his board. room spent a room spent a night in marlos's chambers mm. so the fourth day the third day, I think, is when Gikrot 
uh, took the prisoners out. Is that wait, wait? Did he take that little gnome girl with him? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, so that, actually, yeah, he would have he would have met Basilon then. He would have definitely met Basilon. No, because... she would have. I think she went off on her own. Oh, she okay. didn't want to go back up to the surface. Okay. That was a, a, she would have went off on her own at some point. Like she just needed to get out of. She would. Yeah, she could have found her way back down somehow. So once she once they were safe, quote unquote, she left the party. But uh, Gikrot took the the prisoners that were the humans and uh, human half elf and dwarf. I think it was that were still alive, and and the other chick that was the Black Earth cultist or about black earth guard was basically done with the cult she's like screw these people they're whack and i'm out of here and she went off on her own so you don't know what happened to her you you freed her but weren't giving her the benefit of any protection she you freed her and let her go on her own so she could have she may have died she may have made it out it's unclear i'm sorry what we were saying farron oh i said she went out and started her own cult with blackjack and Hogan. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Probably not. You imagine she probably went back to whatever life she had before. Um, so the gnome left on her own. She left on her own. And then Gikrot escorted the other three back out. One of which is a noble who said, if you or when you get back to Agic, make sure to find me and I'll definitely reward you for freeing me. And Farron also did that, like, you know, facts speak thing with the city to let them know what our progress was. Yes. And yes, they there said, was a... take your time. And so hence Kyra told us her backstory and we all were empathetic, which is why we are down here now to head into the Underdark and spend even more time in fucking I had a dream, Try didn't not you? to die. They didn't say they didn't say take your time. What they said was that there was another attack. So there was actually an earthquake. Actually. There was an earthquake and said, you know, Get back as soon as you can, but it's also good to fig if you can figure out what the hell is going on. And you all, with Kyra's, Kyra had a dream, which she just, again, told to Gitgrot, which she had already shared with you all, that she feels like she needs to find her father at some point and that there might be a way for her to get to him down here. Which is possibly connected to the earthquake. It's unclear. Okay. okay. We are off to the races. All right. So, um, are you all sharing the benefit of how you gain the aid? Who or is like is that... snorting the cocaine mouth breathing? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> mouth I breathing. I think it was, uh, I think it was Tyler. It's all right. It was, like, it was like your Tyler? shirt rough yeah, brushing I'm, against the uh, mic or something. It might have been my shirt. Mm. Um, I was so moving there for a second. <laughs> yep, no worries. So do you? So again, so Gikra, you see that they're under this aid. Are you two going to share that with the others, or oh, are you yeah, all yeah. just going to so, carry so on? Kaylin definitely. Um, once Kyra, uh, you know, explains everything to Gikra, and we, you know, rehash all that. He, uh, Kaylin also says, "Oh, by the way, there is this, um, you know, this altar-like kind of uh, sarcophagus um, tomb." Uh, down this hallway that if you show your respects uh, to it, we'll bless you with, uh, we'll, we'll give you, we'll grant you a blessing. Because, you know, he probably doesn't know that it's aid, but, you know. I the name Hendril. <gasps> oh. Kaylin, that's our secret. Oh. <laughs> the name Hendril Fobreaker, it was inscribed in ancient Dwarven script on top of the sarcophagus, and there was a Dwarvish phrase that said, bow your head and remember valor. And you found that when you guys kind of bowed your head or kneeled down in respect, you were blessed with aid. Gotcha. Sounds fun. I'm ready to get blessed. So, so all right, so... We just, I mean, they all if you it, suggested, right? so let's just, I think they can... Uh, also on is... Nah. Willing, Farron is the only one I want to ask. I don't no. know how he would feel about it. Nah. He's not a bowing to things type of person. And yeah. um, I, I'd say in uh, under comment, I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't, I mean, from where I'm from, I don't bow to anybody, but Kalen said it was good, so I was like, all right, I figure he's a noble, I'm a noble, and... But I understand if you don't want to it's, partake. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was in the sense about like uh, self or like just you know showing respect. Yeah, it wasn't subservience. So. It wasn't like people would I bow know, like they would to us, Kyra. I know it's that's that's why I, that's why I did it. <laughs> It's hey, so we said that. Somewhere. I said that in Undercommon. You didn't hear what I said. Thank you very much. Doesn't Kalen uh, understand Undercommon now because he has a uh, Iron Fang? I think that's part of the. Hold on. It was Taslan kind of chokes yeah. like You're right, jokingly. It's <laughs> oh. right, you do speak Terran now. Yeah, Baslan jokingly says, "Well, if the Queen says it's all right," and he kind of chuckles and he'll walk in there and. So I, I get it. He's so gonna Gitra make fun is... of me this whole day, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. No, he's he loved it. I think he. I thought it was awesome role playing for one, and I. I also think it made perfect sense in the given the situation. It was fantastic, especially oh, yeah. when you're talking about Farron is your king and all that. It's like, and he's he's essentially like your retainer slash bodyguard. It was cool, perfect. All right, so if Gitgrot and Bosslon go in there, which Bosslon would, uh, I believe. You'll both get the benefit of the aid spell, which will allow you for the rest of the day. Your hit points go up by how much was it? I don't remember. Five, twenty, I want to say. It was twenty. 20. Or, no, it was quite a bit. It was oh, twenty. Wow. Yeah. 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 So you notice, Farron, that they are both a little, or they're all now a little more flush. Uh, a little more hearty inhales, you might say. Indeed. All right. So after doing all that, now what would you all like to do? Well, let's go deeper, right? So let's show you now. Uh, uh, sh Kyra, shall we relate to them the toadstool area that we uh, saw, and or see if you know we want to press on, you know, beyond the the, the battle that they just fought above? Ah, oh, it's. Totally up to you. Whatever you'd like to do. I'm all for it. Well, uh, Kalen asked Barcelona so and we, we Baron. About it and... Yeah, yeah. What, what did you guys see ahead of you with, with this fight? Oh, you guys just won. Ghosts. Uh, there was like a mine shaft in there, and there was some ghosts. We did. Yeah, Barcelona said they really didn't have a moment to search the room. They just stepped into it and were attacked. But there's a mine cut in there and another door. Caleb goes over to Farron and puts his hand on his shoulder and says, there is always another door, my friend, isn't there? Well, yes. That's the only way you go forward. Well, then. Shall we press on in that direction, or looks at Kyra? Shall we check out the toadstools? Uh, I don't, I don't want to go to the toadstools. All right. <laughs> it's just it's creepy looking. I'm sorry. I'm still a girl. Then let's then Farron, let's uh, lead on. Let's or Basilon, let you know show us uh, show us the way forward. Okay, I all right. Basilon's willing to go and um, open the door. So I'll go in point out there's a okay. big, big explosion where the oh yeah they came from over there like, like crack right. in the wall or something it's where okay. it's scorched awesome uh, so when you step in the room uh, this is let's see something so this is a natural passage and it enters this rubble strewn chamber from the south petering out to the north which is where they seem to come out of. Rusting iron rails are anchored to the floor, and a pair of ancient ore carts still rest on the rails. The dust on the floor is thick, and the air is stale. And when you, when you come back into this room, as you step... Let's see. As the first two... I'm going to say... Uh, so, Farron, were you probably the first one in the room, or do you think Bosslon would lead? Um, I don't mind. Okay, so you step into the room, followed right behind by Bosslon and then Kaylin, uh, and I'm assuming Gitgrot and uh, Kyra, you're f coming as well. I don't see your token, so... Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right next to uh, no worries. Kaylin. I was fixing something on my um, sheet. 
No worries. So when uh, when Boslan and Kaylin first step into the room, uh, there is a shining apparition of a very clearly dwarven warrior in golden mail. And it appears right where, essentially right where those specters came out. It's smiling and uh, it it just smiles. It kind of nods its head and thanks. You you imply that it, probably from killing those specters, you're, it's grateful. It pour, it points over to a pile of rubble near the end of the northern tunnel, and then it fades away. Well, that wasn't there before. I think we're supposed to do something with the rubble. Uh, so we're just <laughs> trusting apparitions now? Is that is that what we're doing? Hey, a brother would not lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe it hid something in it or something like that before it got eaten by specters? Or I don't know. Before it explodes. Does someone want to all? investigate? Kalen will. As a dwarf, I, I go right over to it, not even asking. Where is it at? In the All right. Then? There you go. Uh, northern corner. Uh, up up north, but right by right near where they oh, came okay. out. There's a gotcha. pile of rubble over there. Um, so you reach down Attacked and the you right. You kind of <laughs> shift. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. That's what killed uh, so you, me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to tell you that's what killed me. You uh you shift the the dirt and rubble and you find the the uh, the handle of a hammer and you pull it out and it's quite remarkable to to a smith you recognize immediately that this is no ordinary hammer uh, give me a history check with advantage all right history uh 20 um the markings on this hammer indicate to you that it is very possibly what is known and re revered as a dwarven thrower. Very, it's very Thor's. nice. <laughs> it is actually yeah. Thor's hammer. Yep, it is. More you good. imagine, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You imagine that 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 apparition that just appeared was probably Hendril Fobreaker. Okay. And that this was perhaps his, his weapon. His weapon. Nice. Um, and it's kind of the the way it's shaped, the way it's hefted. You know, the the weight of it and everything. The scrolling on there. You're not a hundred percent sure without doing like a detect magic or something like this, or spending enough time with it to, as you know, if it's if it is in fact a uh, so dwarven a thrower, it needs to be attuned. Yeah. So, but but. Every indication in your mind of like again, yeah, that's what it exactly your knowledge is a smith, your knowledge is a smith, your your dwarven ancestry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like all that just like immediately clicks in your mind. Like this is a mighty weapon. I also start digging further, hoping to find a shield. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, I, I take it back to the to the group and I, I explain to them what I think it is. Awesome. You can use it with two hands. Two? It is versatile. Yeah. Gotcha. It is a versatile weapon, yeah. Gotcha. It essentially is a warhammer. Um, mm. You do need to take... Uh, you will need to take a short rest to attune to it. But I think. Let me, Let me double check. Let me double check. Let me double check. Where's yeah, it requires attunement by a dwarf. By a dwarf, yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. you're the only one in the party that could actually really benefit from it. Very nice. Unless I had a d belt of dwarf in kind. <sighs> and, that's true, thank you, Reed. Uh, and, just so we're not above table, just so we're not thinking that the DM is cheating and throwing candy at you all, Ooh, you like literally candy. would not have found that if you did not have the aid spell. It is a function of this quest. Oh, that's cool. You yeah, you found one of the coolest items in 
in this, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is Very one of the coolest cool. items Thanks to Caitlin being able to read Dwarven. <laughs> Very cool. Indeed. Yeah. Very it all comes cool. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was super cool. And, I opened that and door. And the timing of Big Rock coming back to the party. <laughs> and not having like, a weapon. On, it <laughs> makes it, yeah, so awesome. totally. It makes it even sweeter. It's awesome. That's D&D, &D, kids. Totally, I mean, I love that's D&D. &D. Freaking epic storytelling. Mm -hmm. He just mm -hmm. showed up at the right all. moment. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> what are we going to do with this thing that nobody's a dwarf? Yeah, we'll just throw it back. <laughs> just stuffs it back in the dirt. Yep. He's so, he comes back, back he's person. confused as hell. They didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't need it. None of us are dwarves. <laughs> I freaking love it. So if I'm oh. trying to open this door, I'm so not even checking for traps. I'm going like, yeah, yeah. apparitions. And I'm just like opening the door. Does that lead to anything? Um, Sorry. So, uh... This door. Oh, okay, fantastic. So you come over to this door and open it, and you see behind it a small corridor. This this corridor is similarly carved, whereas the one that Kaylin is standing next to is uh, the natural uh, cavern. So this one is only 10 feet tall, same dwarven kind of carving, um, and it leads to another door in about 30 feet. Oh, I didn't even see that door. So, yeah, so I, I yell out to, to There is another the door. I was like, uh, there's, there's another a... door over here behind this door. Do you want to go down the mine cart area or do you want to go through the door? I'm going to go through the mine there's cart also... area. Okay. There's also a third door down here. So I walk over here to the. There is a third door to the west. And I say. That has not been checked. Farron, are you, like, going to do your thing? Cause I'll keep oh. opening doors, and you know yeah, I will. Do 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 your thing with your thing, Baron. <laughs> Ooh. I just flick out my wow, themes too. Watches. While looking at Colin, uh, looking at Kalen. Now, just because I'm a noble doesn't mean I don't know a thing or two about mines. Maybe not to the level of our dear Stunty over here, Gickrop, but they don't lay track unless there's something important or necessary in either direction i think we should follow the railroad here okay is I, farron I, opening the door checking the door um i'll check it see if it's um, I'll, I'll wait till uh farron opens the door before just tap the handle make sure it's not hot all right <laughs> fire behind uh investigation yeah if you want to check it out definitely um Seat? yeah it's not trapped Okay. Is it locked? Uh, it doesn't seem to be. I mean, you'd have to push on it to find out. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay. Door swings open, and you see a, uh, the top of a stairs. There's a landing. Uh, stairs go down. Descend stairs. down to your... I'll just take to a your step right in as you're looking in. Look. I'll just step in okay. and have a look down. Uh, are you trying to be quiet? Is that your uh, intention? Yeah. yeah, I'm always quiet. Give me a stealth check. See how could you quiet are. All right. You see that the steps go down, you know, 15, 20 feet. Uh, there's a landing at the bottom, and natural caverns seem to open to the west or to your left. I just come back. Uh, just some stairs down there. Okay. Uh, all right. Closing or leaving the door open? Um, I'll close it. Okay. Just so all right. It's closed. That's wrong. That's not right. What's wrong? Are you guys, as a general rule, going to close or op close doors when you get through them, or just leave them open? Or should I ask every time? I say, me personally, leaving them open. If we have to backtrack, I'd hate to run into a door for trying to run away. Yeah, so I think if we've like opinion. cleared a room, leave it open. But if it's like, all right, we're not going to go this way. Close the door again. So if we come back and it's open, we know that someone's open. Okay, I think that's a great idea. I think I'm also going to, so I don't lose track of it. Start putting some, uh, like, open. Yeah. Just like a cross in a circle or something like that. Close and open. Actually, yeah, that's even easier. Just doing some freehand drawing, probably. Yeah, so we'll just go like that. That's open. 
So like on your, you know, what is it? Circle is on, line is off. Something like that. We can hard like power supplies and stuff. Yep. Oops, that didn't work. Uh, is it is it control? How do you, no? It's alt. Damn it. There we go. Open, open. That works. Good enough. All right. So those two doors are open. If it doesn't say open, it's not open. <laughs> um, and I will fix the other ones down here that were open. Um, so uh, I guess that's. All right, so you guys, so Kalen has suggested you go down to the uh, follow mine tracks. Did you? So you do know if that is a magic hammer, he needs to attune to it. So are you going to just press on, or did you want to wait the thirty minutes? Give him so time. Do that. I'm down. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, I don't see why we can't just, like, talk about where we're going to go next or whatever for 30 minutes while you tunes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. So, Boss Salon is definitely in agreement. Like, yeah, I'm sure we can all – we all need to eat and refresh ourselves. And so he kind of hands out his uh, uh, wine skin or water skin just, you know, in case anybody needs it. Takes a swig himself. Make sure everybody's hydrated. <laughs> um. You guys take take a good 30, 45 minutes gathering your wits. And uh, so you go ahead and add that Dwarven Thrower into your sheet. And it should automatically, if you just drag and drop it over your sheet, you don't even have to, have to put it any. I'll do it for you, dude. It'll take less time. So get grow. I just didn't know where to find it. I'm sorry. Is it in oh, the... Uh, uh, no worries. Yeah, on the it's SRD. The yeah. yeah, it's on the Compendium. And you just, they changed the, all I was trying to say is they changed the sheets a little bit. So now all you have to do is like drag it over the sheet anywhere and it should auto populate. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. Just anywhere. Yeah, you'll need, a, you'll need a short rest to attend to it to get benefits. I think I, I, think I did her. It would, it would essentially just function as just it is. a wall hammer, though, wouldn't it? Until you change to it to get, like, the plus three. Right, exactly. Abilities so. on that. There you go. Now you oh, got it. First to uh, throne. All right. Warhammer. They ruined it. It's it's awesome. And if you would like to, you can go ahead and just get rid of your minus one versus, you know, I'm sure you don't need those anymore. Need that yeah. anymore. I think I just, I'd hold on to the mace either way, just as a, a backup weapon, just in case. But the Warhammer, I would just either put it in the group loot or just toss it along the side. Sure. Hey, Gregory, it's not yes, showing my saving throws correct, and apparently it hasn't ever. So that's what I'm doing if I'm... Oh. Yeah. Sure. For some reason, it's it, not, I don't know. I don't know how to just add a plus one to everything. Because I have on a cloak of protection. And oh, it, I can help you with that. It does yeah, the uh, bonus to the AC already, but it's not giving me the plus to the Do you the have the modifiers? Throws. Yeah, so under modifiers, on the right-hand side of the sheet, there's a little line item that says modifiers. It's under your personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws. The very next one is modifiers. If you oh, add a modifier the modifier, the where that's where it says there? Mm -hmm. If okay. you if you mod if you edit that, you can add in a plus one for your save. Thank you. That's what I was trying to figure out because I'm I'm used to the other sheet. I'm not used to the sheet. I have like, no idea what I'm doing. Okay, thank you. Sorry, no sorry about that, folks. Not at all. Not at all. Um, and get grot. I'm just to remind you. I'm showing that you still have inspiration if you want to use it. So you can affect a uh, d20 roll. I think. Uh, Boslon has it right now, and I can't remember if you used it last time. I don't think he did. All right, so I just I just have it still. Yeah. Okay. You haven't. You have not used it, as far as I. Can. It's on your sheet, so I'm assuming it didn't get used. All right, so you take the time to uh, rest, recuperate, and get Grot sort of focuses, um, and tunes into this beautiful fantastic hammer.
This was a little bit long session, so I'm bringing it up into a few parts. Stay tuned for part two. You can find a link to that below. And in the meantime, keep rolling 20s.